and, and then uh, re re returning to Earth as well. Um, and, um, but I think we'll take this in steps. Uh, certainly something like uh, Falcon Heavy could deliver you know, decent payload to the surface of Mars. Uh, it, it's sort of on the order of 12 to 15 metric tons. Um, so that, that's not bad. I, th I think you probably want a vehicle that can deliver something on the order of 50 metric tons, you know, um, and be able to do that in a fully reusable um, manner. Th 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 then, then the whole equation works. Um, and there's more than one way to skin that cat. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what I think. Yes, I have a question uh, on the uh, reusable vehicle that you talked about. I, I've seen a, a lot of studies of these vehicles, and the key to, to making it work seems to be to get on the order of two or three hundred missions a year to keep the cost down. What do you see as the the commercial drive that will will result in the need for two or three hundred launches a year? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always a tough question to answer, and, and I suspect in the early days of, of airplanes, people didn't imagine that there would be this many airplane trips, but um, I, I think the biggest driver for that is, is really a base on Mars, or you know, potentially a base on the Moon. Um, but I don't think there's really a need for that many satellites, uh, for example. Um, and um, I, I also don't think it's that there's a rational basis for, like, you know, doing things like mining helium-3 on the moon. And, or really, I, I have a hard time imagining mining anything anywhere and bringing it to Earth. Because um, Earth has got a lot of stuff. <laughs> Earth's crust has got almost every... I mean, Earth is big. <laughs> um, so, but... I do think there is a market for people who would want to move to the moon or move to Mars. And, uh, and, and that, that, I think, is, is, is interesting uh, and, and can, could support a huge number of flights, that, thousands of flights a year. Uh, sure. Uh, question just about uh, our Dragon um, spacecraft and um, w what we're going to do with respect to um, carrying, transporting astronauts and whatnot. Um, so the, we actually designed the Falcon 9 and uh, Dragon to um, meet the published uh, Na uh, NASA human rating uh, design guidelines. So, you know, things like so designing to a 1.4 factor of safety instead of a 1.25, um, having a multi uh, being multi-failure toler tolerant, so a, dra a, drag a Dragon, for example, can lose any two engines uh, at, any, at any time and still be safe uh, with respect to the space station. It uh, can still tra translate and rotate uh, as needed. Um, and um, we actually have a sort of a, a secondary heat shield behind the primary heat shield. Um, the the, the, the um, avionics, all two-failure tolerant, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's got windows. Um, so the question is, well, what doesn't it have? Um, uh, really, the main thing is just the escape system. Um, so, that, so in terms of upgrading it, uh, we need to add a launch escape. Um, and in this, we're taking a, a sort of a, a different path than has been uh, done before, uh, which is to tap the onboard propellant, uh, which is NTRMMH, um, as escape uh, propellant. Because uh, um, you, you either need to maneuver on orbit or you need to escape. You don't need to do both. Um, and this, this makes for a very efficient, uh, mass efficient design. Um, <clears throat> it, and it also means that you can carry um, uh, high velocity escape capability all the way to orbit, uh, as opposed to having to dump a launch tower kind of early on. Um, and, uh, and then uh, a sort of optional bonus is we can use those same engines to land propulsively. Um, now, we're still going to retain um, redundant parachutes on dragons, so you still have redundant um, you know, uh, parachutes. So effectively, you'd have almost four levels of redundancy because um, the uh, the landing engines are themselves redundant, and then you've got uh, redundant main parachutes. So like four things would have to fail before, actually only on the yeah the if, yeah four, four things in a row would have to fail before, in order for loss of life. 
Um, but then the neat thing about that is you could use it to propulsively land in other places like Mars or Moon or somewhere. Um, so I think it's, it's got potential as a generalized science delivery platform uh, for, for other you know, missions in the solar system. Um, so, the question is, where do I see electric propulsion? Uh, I, I think that's actually, um, that's for sure, a good idea for interplanetary travel, um, particularly since uh, you, you know you're going to need a lot of energy once you're on the surface of Mars. So you may as well use that energy um, while you're in transit to to speed up the journey. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think electric propulsion de definitely is a good idea. Um, and uh, it, it would be kind of a waste not, not to do electrical propulsion on the way there. Um, the, you know, the, 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 the trick is you want, you want to obviously have electrical propulsion with enough thrust to matter. You know, that, that's, that's pretty important. Um, so, yeah, I think that's... that's um, and it needs to be fairly efficient in terms of the energy uh, uh, per, th you know, per, per newton, like, I guess, what what's of energy for, to, to newtons of force? Um, so. okay. Um, so, I mean, the, the capsule is, um, d does have an LOD, uh, you know, that it has a, depending upon where we put the, um, the, the lateral center of mass, we can um, adjust the LOD to as high as 0.3. Um, so uh, that, that gives us a pretty good uh, accuracy. In fact, um, Dragon landed to within about a mile of its target uh, on, on the flight in December. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, there's there's not an obvious reason I think to to have more elevity than that. Um, yeah, nothing that I can think of. Um, and then you know, the, the the problem with with having more complex lifting bodies is that then it it gets kind of weird if you're going to, if you want to go to Mars, you know, and you, so you if you Mars has a you know much lower energy. Uh, um, atmospheric density, particularly in the lower atmosphere. Uh, so, uh, you know, something that worked well on Earth wouldn't necessarily work well on Mars. Um, it obviously would be completely useless on the Moon. Um, so, so I think, you know, something with a, a, a you know, 0.2 to 0.3 LOD is, 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 I think, good enough. Um, and it's very robust as well. You don't have to worry about uh, maintaining a specific angle of attack. Um, or something going wrong with your control systems or anything. It, it, even if the if Dragon control systems totally malfunctioned um, and, and were, were just dead, you, you'd still um, you still survive because it's going to naturally orient with the main heat shield down. Um, your G, you'll experience higher Gs. You know, you might see eight or nine Gs instead of four to five, um, but that's the only downside. Uh, and you can literally you can manually pull the chutes. So so it's very very robust in that sense. Sure. Um, yeah. So, the, the, for Falcon Heavy to to um, the, the, the cross feed uh, between the, the the outer um, cores to the center uh, is is pretty helpful. You know, it, it gives um, roughly twenty to thirty percent more payload, um, and uh, we have an advantage here in that because there are nine engines. Uh, we can control flow to those engines, in, in, engines individually. So the, so the way we, we, we do uh, cross feed is, um, is to basically um, uh, draw propellant uh, for, for the engines that are adjacent to the core from, from the, uh, um, you know, so, so the, the, the engines that, so, so the center core engine is, is pulling from, from its side core on either side. Um, and, th and then we, we can shut pre-valves to those engines so that it's not sucking it down from the side course. Um, you can't do this if you've got one engine or, or if, you, if, you know, but you can do it if you have, if you have multiple, you know, nine engines. It's a lot, lot easier. Um, but but the, the, 
the cross feed is, 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 is really an option uh, uh, for uh, really big payloads. So uh, for, for customers that, that don't need the cross feed, we would, we would not uh, enable cross feed. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, but it's helpful for missions to the, the outer, either big missions to Mars or missions to the outer solar system. Um, you know, so we're talking uh, with Tenas about some potential missions that, that go out uh, you know, to 150 or 200 AU, so you're sort of way out past, uh, past Pluto and stuff. Um, Well, uh, this question was just generally, how's it gone with reusability? Um, well, so far it has sucked, really. I mean, uh, it is extremely difficult. Um, and there's a reason that nobody has invented a fully reusable rocket before. It's super damn hard. Um, <laughs> um, but we have learned a lot. Um, and uh, we, we did recover Dragon. So, if you sort of think of Dragon as a third stage, we have recovered Dragon, and we recovered it in a condition that you could easily refly it with, with changing nothing. You know, repack the chutes and you can fly it again. Um, uh, but, 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 but the thing is, we can't afford to give a Dragon level of protection to the booster, or the booster would get no payload to orbit. Um, so the real tricky thing here is essentially you know, constructing a suit of armor that is just exactly tailored to the forces it's going to need to resist on re-entry. Um, and then, um, tr so, so and, and those forces are higher than we anticipated. Um, it's, uh, even for the first stage, uh, because of the um, trajectory of the first stage, it comes in at a pretty steep angle. Uh, so the force uh, is, 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 is very high. It's basically belly flopping on the atmosphere. Um, and uh, so something has to be done to, to uh, shed velocity. Um, so you know, we're looking at you know, potentially restarting the engines to, do, uh, to shed, shed some velocity and, and give it a, a more benign re-entry uh, weight against uh, increased um, structural uh, you know, margins and, uh, and, increased, uh, and, and a better thermal shield. It's, it's, it's a tough trade on propellant versus Dry mass, and um, I, I think we, you know we've got something that on paper closes, um, and we'll, we'll see if that uh, if that turns out to uh, be reality as well. <laughs>